All right, then it's settled. Per our brave hero's plan, let's rendezvous at Yenshang Tea House tomorrow. Ah, you're here. Good. I'll head upstairs first, and you join me in a bit. You've got nothing to worry about. As long as this lucky coin's in my hands, it'll do as it's told. Before I toss the coin, I'll get our guy to bet heads or tails. Then it's your turn to bet. Now remember, if I touch my chin, you bet heads. If I touch my forehead, you go for tails. Waiting for someone? As long as you follow the rules of the tea house, you're welcome here. Please be our guest. Hmm. From the way you describe it, Liyue does sound like an attractive place to settle. Perhaps I might have to make the move here after all. All that awaits me back in Mondstadt is a horde of insufferable sycophants. Truly tedious. <laughs> the reason I left home in the first place was because I was reluctant to simply live off of my inheritance. I understand. For one as ambitious as yourself, Mr. Rich, living off of the family fortune must feel like the dullest existence in the world. Um, what are you doing? It's common courtesy to introduce yourself. Can't you see we got here first? They're running out of tables, huh? <laughs> Looks like this location's getting too small for them. Very well, I'll make an exception for you this one time. Let's hope the tea, at least, won't disappoint me. So, my friend, what's your name? Here is the tea that you ordered. Please enjoy. Ugh. This tea is... Uh, never mind. Mr. Bai, this has been a most pleasant and insightful conversation. I consider it good fortune that I encountered such a refined gentleman as yourself so far from home. Please allow me to pay for the tea. <laughs> yes, good fortune indeed. In that case, I must thank you for your generosity. You there. I'll get yours, too. Oh, you can't tell? My family's lived in Mondstadt for generations. I got bored sitting around at home and decided to set off on a journey to expand my horizons. The sights of Liyue Harbor are rather spectacular. I've half a mind to buy a waterfront property here so I can come vacationing every year. That would be quite nice. If the family would spare me a little loose change, I could even invest in an antique shop or two so I have something to do during the day. And? The point of life is to enjoy yourself. If something makes me happy, it's worth every mora. Mr. Rich, just to clarify, that's quite a large sum of mora as far as the common man is concerned. It's understandable that our friend over here feels out of his league. The name's Albert. Surname Rich. But only the servants in the house address me as Mr. Rich. Now that we're so well acquainted, Mr. Bai, please just call me Albert. <laughs> it does have a nice ring to it. It is my honor to become friends with someone of your... caliber. You flatter me. What say you to acting as my guide during my time in Liyue? I'll pay you handsomely, of course. Naturally, board and lodging would be included. And I could pay you in the region of... 50,000 mora per day? No need, my good friend. I shan't be so vulgar as to take your mora. We're both men of character. 
The pleasure of your ongoing acquaintance shall be ample reward in itself. To join a noble gentleman on his travels is a rare opportunity. Please, let me draft up an exact itinerary. I'll make sure to give you the experience of a lifetime. You there. You're welcome to join us if you want. Which clan did you say you were with? The... Hoo-ha clan or something? Goo ha huh? huh? Strange choice of name. Gotta say, I've been in Liyue for a while now. This is the first I'm hearing of them. I guess they're one of these obscure ones who keep to themselves. Yes, well, there are many martial arts clans and factions in Liyue. It's only natural that you haven't become acquainted with all of them. Ha, <laughs> fair enough. Still, weird name. Bet they have some even weirder practices. Seriously, though, what kind of skills do you guys train anyway? It's all for show, right? I saw some people performing a few tricks down at the wharf. Is it that kind of thing? I already told the server to put it on my tab. Don't bother getting her to split the bill. It'll only complicate things. Young man, there's no need to take things so seriously. Why don't you loosen up and enjoy the free drink? Are you trying to make a point by throwing my generosity back in my face? All right then. What if I say your bill is mine and don't let you pay? Uh, please, my friends, let's not get so worked up. Yin Chong Tea House is no venue for a duel. We'll all get escorted right out the door. You young people have hot tempers, I understand that. But there's no need to come to blows over a few words taken to heart when there are far more diplomatic ways to resolve the dispute. Did I hear that right? So you'll only pay for yourself if you win, but I'll get the check for the three of us if you lose. It's not that I care about the Mora. After all, I offered to pay for everyone's drinks in the first place. No, what I find truly absurd is your refusal to play fair. I demand that you also pay for three if you win. Fine. You can have your apology if you win, but on one condition. We'll do the best of three, and the winner pays for the table. Well, as long as you're no longer raring to fight, peace begets wealth, as the elders used to say. <laughs> Why don't you join us, Mr. Bai? Let's entertain this guy for a sec. We don't want him to think you're stingy. Uh, but I wasn't even a part of your argument. What are you trying to say, Mr. Bai? Whose side are you on here? I, uh, of course, I'm on, uh... And anyway, it's no big deal if you win. It's just a few cups of tea, after all, so you can just take it from your fees as my guide. Uh, uh all right then. I suppose it's not all that different from the dice gambling games I used to play in my youth. <laughs> if it's just for a few drinks... You can count me in. All right, now we're talking. Okay, now that we've agreed on the rules, how should we do this coin toss? After all, a Mora coin looks the same on both sides. Well, that should be simple enough. Here, I'll take this coin and ask the counter to draw a line on one side. You two can wait for me. Young man, I can see that you haven't spent many years in the real world. You take everything far too personally. I, too, only met this Mondstadt millionaire by complete chance today, but we're getting along just fine. I actually came here to meet with a business partner to count the cash from two recent investments when this gentleman struck up a conversation with me. In the real world, you've got to keep up appearances. There's no need to offend the rich. 
After all, if you keep them happy, you can probably make some more off of them, too. You young people are much too impulsive. It pays to keep a level head. Just so we're clear, let's say the marked side is heads, and the unmarked side is tails. Everyone has to pick a side before the coin toss. Oh, and no take-backs. We should also take turns tossing the coin. Sounds fair to me. Why don't you do the first toss, Albert? All right, then. I'll start us off. Here we... Oh! <laughs> Wait, I nearly forgot to collect everyone's bets. Mr. Bai, heads or tails? Hmm, I suppose the choice is arbitrary since it's a 50-50 chance. I'll go with tails. Let me think. I'll also go with tails. What about you, heads or tails? Oh, darn, I won. Lucky me, I guess. I won as well. <laughs> guess there might be a formal apology in the cards after all. Hmm. I have a suggestion. If one of us loses twice in a row, they should get knocked out while the other two carry on playing to decide the winner. Otherwise, with three of us playing, it'll start to get difficult to keep track of who's won the most times. I flipped the coin last time, so why don't you go next? I don't want you blaming my coin-tossing skills if you guess wrong this turn. Here. Now just wait a second, my dear friends. Please let me do the second toss. Oh? Anxious to take your turn, Mr. Bai? You are both young, and I've already seen your short tempers for myself. If Albert loses this round and this young man wins, you'll be tied. And before you know it, you'll be at each other's throats again. Well, that's not my only consideration, either. You two may be too young to know this, but I've been around the block a few times. What's to say this isn't a trick coin, hmm? In dice games, people use all sorts of methods to rig the game. Some even fit the dice with mechanisms that give them whichever result they want. If Albert wins the next round and you, young man, lose for the second time in a row, then the third round will just be a tiebreaker between him and me, and you won't get your apology to the Guhua clan. If that happens, only for you to then find out that the coin was rigged all along, you're sure to accuse me of working with Albert to scam you while mocking the Guhua clan. I can only imagine the kind of vengeful warpath that would put you on. A purely hypothetical scenario, of course, but one that I'm bringing up now to avoid any misunderstanding further down the road. Go on. Give me the coin. I'll show you how to check if it's been rigged. Very diligent of you indeed, Mr. Bai. Looks like I chose the right person to be my guide. Here, take it. A rigged coin will always be a little heavier than a normal coin, you see. Yeah, this one seems perfectly normal to me, however. But don't take it from me. Why don't you test it for yourself? What's your bet this time, Mr. Bai? I'll stick with tails. Tails, huh? <laughs> well, you seem to have a feel for this, so I guess I'll match your bet again this round. Tails it is. And you? Well, my luck's still just about holding out. <laughs> the three of us are now tied, so no one drops out. Certainly better than Albert and I going head-to-head -head in the final round. Mm-hmm. Well, here you go. What'll it be, Mr. Bai? 
Hmm, it's a tough decision this time. <laughs> That's what makes it fun, isn't it? Anyway, there's no need to stress. What's the cost of a few cups of tea compared to 50,000 I'll be paying you every day? Uh, you make a good point. All right, I'll take heads. Okay, and now it's my turn to guess. Not that the outcome matters either way to me. I won't even notice the more is gone. Whatever, I'll take tails. Oh, why did it have to be heads? This whole thing started because you two got into a spat, and now I'm the one that has to foot the bill. Hmm. What say you to another round? Sure, why not? I'm having fun. I can go for as many rounds as you want. <laughs> what a miserly person. Do as you please. The two of us can play. But Albert, all the fun of gambling is in the stakes involved. What say you to throwing a little loose change into the pot? Ah, oh, come on now. No need to walk on eggshells here. Let's keep it simple, shall we? If you guess right, I pick up the tab. But if you guess wrong, I'm afraid it's still on you. Uh, sure. That's exactly what I was thinking. Well, here's the coin. You can toss first. I'll take heads. Hmm. I'll choose... Wouldn't it defeat the whole purpose of betting if you guessed the same as me? This is a two-person game now. Surely one of us has to guess heads and the other tails. All right, all right. It all comes down to luck, after all. I'll take tails. Ooh, looks like Rex Lapis has smiled upon me today, after all. <laughs> Thank you for the tea, Albert. Look at you getting so giddy over some chump change. It's like you've never gambled with real money before, my old man. That's a real rush, I'm telling you. This is nothing by comparison. In fact, I'm starting to get a little bored. Well, um, in that case, would you care for another game? Sure. Let's up the stakes a little this time. Shall we say 50,000? Oh, maybe that's a little on the high side. What, 50,000? But that's just a single day's guide pay for you. All right. I'll bet tails. Great, then I'll bet heads. No takebacks. <clears throat> heads. Tails. Oh. How unfortunate. I shouldn't have gotten greedy. After all, in the long run, gambling is always a losing game. <laughs> 50,000 more. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Albert, I'm terribly sorry, but as it happens, I forgot to bring my coin purse with me today. Uh, could you perhaps take this 50,000 out of my guide fees? Call it an advance payment. That would make us even. Advance payment? <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid that's not my style. It'll have to be cash. Ha <laughs> this day just getting better and better. Well, so be it. Fifty thousand. Um, let me see what cash I have on me. Just fifty thousand? That's not what we agreed on. Huh? What are you talking about? I think you'll find that our bet was for 50,000. No, it wasn't. The amount was one million. <sighs> one million? Are you insane? Come on now, Albert. Be serious. A million here and a million there might be all fun and games to you rich types, but to ordinary folk like myself, this is no laughing matter. I'm being perfectly serious. I know what I said, and what I said was one million mora. 
You're lying through your teeth! Hey, young man, you tell him. Did you hear him say one million at any point during our bet? Huh? What the? I'm not deaf, you know. I swear I heard 50,000. Wait. Oh, I see. You two are in this together. I never met either of you before today, and out of nowhere you suddenly roped me into betting over a coin toss, and now you're accusing me of owing you one million more. Ah, do you have any idea who you're trying to cheat? I know all the tricks in the book. I can't believe a couple of beginners like you managed to get this far. <laughs> Well, don't you try to celebrate just yet. You amateurs have a lot to learn about the art of the con. Do you really think that nobody else will have heard all the commotion we just made? All I need is one witness, and this little scheme of yours falls apart. Frauds! Frauds, I say! These two kids are trying to scam me out of my hard-earned mora! Hostess! Oh, hostess, come quickly! <sighs> How pathetic. What is going on here? If you can't abide by our rules, you're not welcome at Yen Shang Tea House. I don't care what the issue is. You don't get to make a racket like that in here. Halberd! Fang! Wait, wait, don't throw me out! These two con artists are trying to steal my mora. You can't let them get away with it! Well, let's take this somewhere else. I don't want any of you disturbing the other guests. Okay, you two. Care to explain yourselves? Gladly. He's making up completely spurious claims. We were betting Mora over a few coin tosses, and now he wants to back out. In the land of contracts, of all places. He won 250,000 from me, then another 800,000 from the both of us. Now he's refusing to pay up the measly 50,000 that he lost in the final round. Okay, so after settling up, a total of one million mora should have changed hands. Sounds plausible enough. It's a complete pack of lies! Hostess, if you don't believe me, ask anyone else in the tea house. These kids were so loud, I guarantee you everybody in that room knows the true story. Sorry to interrupt you all, but you're witnesses to the situation here. Is what Mr. Bai says true? Oh, thank goodness you're finally here. What took you so long? That old guy's been bragging about the mora he's won so loudly, I'm surprised the whole street didn't hear him. I was about to report him to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Leave me out of this. I want nothing to do with gamblers and scammers. Please, just bring me my check. Our new owner laid down the law not too long ago. We turn a blind eye towards casual games of dice, but there is zero tolerance for any explicit gambling with real mora. Return any winnings to the party you took them from, and we'll say that none of this ever happened. Otherwise, I'll have to bring in the Millilith. And I can assure you that they take a more hard line on this kind of thing than we do. Why should I have to give them any Mora? I don't have any Mora on me! Oh, but I think you do. Two investments, was it? One of them to the tune of exactly one million as it happens. Oh. And don't forget you still need to pay the tab. You... Wait... How did you... Halberd! Fang! There's a gentleman here that I'd really like you to meet. Please, please don't! I'll pay, all right? This was never your Mora to begin with. We'll be returning it to its rightful owner now. What did you think, Captain Wu? Could you hear clearly from your corner on the second floor? Yes, everything. I... I can't thank you two enough. Wu... This was your doing, wasn't it? You and this monster planned the whole thing! Along with that blonde one. 
And all the customers on that floor were in on it too, weren't they? I know where you live, and I know what your wife looks like, and your pretty little daughter too. You crossed the wrong man today! But who'd be scared of a crook like you? I'll take you on any day of the week. <laughs> well, let's see how long that false bravado of yours will last. Oh, look at that. He figured it out. Guess he's not as dumb as we thought. Don't you two get cocky either. Just you wait. I will hunt you down. My apologies for having to leave this question until you'd vacated the premises. But I couldn't have things escalate inside the tea house. I hope you can understand our position. I noticed that all the guests on the second floor were present before you took your seats, then left almost immediately after you did. Would I be correct in saying you were looking to set this man up? Wait, so you saw through it right away? Under normal circumstances, we would never tolerate a scheme like this taking place on our grounds, as it risks damaging our owner's reputation. However, I understand that our owner holds the Traveler in high regard, and must have good reasons for their actions. Still, I would appreciate an explanation, if only so that I can answer to the owner. Ah, as I thought. When you're operating on someone else's turf, you run the risk of clashing with the master of the house. Thankfully, we considered that possibility before going ahead with our plan. Over to you, brave hero. You're the one with the connections in Liyue. It's your time to shine. Okay. I understand the situation now. It goes without saying that I have no wish to stand in the way of your chivalrous deeds. I'll report everything you told me to our owner. Well, Captain Wu, remember what I promised you? What do you think? Angry and frustrated enough for you? Excuse me, coming through. Hmm, is this the Mr. Bai you reported to us? Yes, that's him all right. The one who scammed Captain Wu. W wait wait Where's your evidence, hmm? And Wu, you've already recovered your mora. I don't deserve to be punished twice for the same crime. You can't talk your way out of this one. You're already suspected of defrauding multiple victims out of smaller amounts, and the combined total meets the threshold for a conviction. If it turns out you're guilty in this case, too, it'll only add to your sentence. Does the plaintiff have any witnesses? If so, we'd really appreciate if they could come with us and provide a testimony. You got tangled up in this too, huh? In that case, please come with me. Your witness statements will play a crucial role in helping to move this case forward. Don't worry, we won't take up too much of your time. And you, sir, can stop twiddling your thumbs. You're coming with us, too. Hey, keep your hands off me. I'll cooperate, I'll cooperate! S stop manhandling me! <laughs> Thank you so, so much, the both of you. I really don't know how I could ever begin to repay you. Well, I have an idea. We originally came here to do some sightseeing. Anywhere you'd recommend we go before the end of our trip? Let me think. Now, where would I want to go? Hey, are either of you interested in a fishing trip? Sounds fun to me. Let's go. Well, this was certainly an eventful end to my trip. It wouldn't have been possible without you. Or my lucky coin, of course. <laughs> well, 
wouldn't be much of a lucky coin if it had. Besides, I already taught you how to become attuned to it. You still need some practice to master the technique, but luckily it decided to play nice and spare us any more complications. Hmm, a better question to ask might be, what do I do to make this coin happy to work with me and show me whichever side I wish? My answer would be that I tell the coin a joke every time I toss it into the air. If it finds my joke funny, then it cooperates with me. Of course, this whole arrangement hinges on a pre-existing amount of trust between the two of us. I can't just get any strange coins to listen to me. Yeah, I was a little surprised when he unwittingly called out our trick coin, but it didn't matter. A good gambler always keeps her options open. You have to have a contingency plan for when the odds are against you. So when I went to the counter, I marked a regular coin as well as my trick one. That safely avoided any risk of him finding out about the trick coin. But it also meant that we wouldn't be able to control the result of that round. But hey, what does it matter? The fact that he made things a little more challenging only made it all the more exciting to watch him slowly but surely fall into our trap. Especially listening to him warn us about the possibility of a rigged coin right as we were scamming him. That was my favorite part. As long as I chose the same bet as him, and you bet the opposite to me, it was always going to end up with him paying. <laughs> Unless, of course, he'd had some other tricks up his sleeve that we hadn't thought of. <laughs> Then things would have gotten really interesting. You two are genuinely the smartest people I've ever met. I'm no intellectual, so I would never have been able to come up with a plan like this. Even when you described it to me, I only understood parts of it. Well, I may not be the smartest guy around, but one thing I do know is this. One should always return tenfold the help that they've received from others. We were just ordinary acquaintances. You had no reason to help me as much as you did. If there's anything I can ever do for you in the future, um, anything at all, please let me know. You can always count on me. I guarantee it. No? Oh? You seem agitated. Are you worried about owing me yet another favor? <laughs> there are two kinds of people who owe me favors. One is my friends, and the other my informants. My informants have to fulfill whatever requests I make of them, no questions asked. The question is, which kind of person do you want to be? I... Ah, and you're torn again. Too afraid to ask to be my friend, but also daunted by the dangers inherent in becoming my informant. Well, it's okay because I just thought of a fun and easy way to get us out of this impasse. Let's do a coin toss. This is the regular coin I prepared for the contingency plan when I was borrowing a pen from the bar. Not the lucky one that does what I tell it to. If it's heads, we're friends. But if it's tails, you're at my beck and call. <laughs> May the Lord of Geo decide. So, was it heads or tails? What do you think? What does your heart tell you? I understand now. You have my most sincere gratitude. Uh, no, that's a little too formal. What I'm trying to say is... Here. Your fishing rods. My friends. <laughs> <laughs>